Welcome to the Living Word, the teaching ministry of Pastor Fisayo Adeniyi, lead pastor of the Ransomed House Lagos. Get ready for enlightenment, encounter, and impartations by the Word. Be blessed as you listen. Thank you. Healer, the bread of God, the scepter of the king. Thank you. The one who is the Ruach himself. Thank you. Thank you. See where two or three are gathered, there you are in the midst of them. Thank you. Thank you. For such a sweet influence of the Spirit, thank you. For such a sweet fragrance of the Spirit, we say thank you. Even those who are dead in the Spirit can, can taste of this fragrance. They, they, can, they can sense this fragrance. Such an heaviness in the heart most free. Such a presence of the King. Comfort are we, thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you. We lay our body down just to enthrone you alone. We lay all our bodies down because in your presence it does not matter. Comforter, deliverer, helper, healer, do what only you can do in our lives. Blessed are your eyes for the see and your ears for the hear, saith the Lord. The Lord is opening your ears to hear. You're receiving certainty concerning divine instruction and guidance. Your eyes see. Thank you, sweet spirit of God. Thank you for enlightenment of the heart. Thank you for new doors. Thank you for breaking down barriers. Thank you, O God, for cutting chains. No more affliction. No more infirmities. The Egyptians you saw before, you see them no more. By the power of the Spirit, you press forward because the breaker has gone ahead of you. According to Micah chapter 2, verse 13, the breaker has gone ahead of you. The king is on the front. He is leading you to triumph. You win and you are a winner. Thank you, Father. Because you have made and sat in with us the sweet fragrance of your presence in every place. Hallelujah. We just smell of Jesus. We 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 smell of Christ. We smell of Christ. We smell of Christ. Spirit, bind, mend. 
Just bask in this presence. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get out. But just bask in this presence. Just bask in this presence. Such a heaviness of the spirit. Just bask in this presence. Just bask in his presence. Just bask in his presence. Bask in his presence. <laughs> just bask in his presence. <laughs> Just bask in his presence. I kayado shili agaras. Just bask in his presence. Just bask in his presence. Aleva aleva liya di abasya. Convictions is taking place right now. Convictions, convictions. Ha ha abashi taya. Meleko va ida basha tahira. Itana we worship you. In Jesus name and amen if you can give me Isaiah 41 13 41 13 as I was reading the scriptures yesterday and I looked at the things before me for the last two days, I've been considering what the Lord has said, what he has promised, and how the journey looks so big. And as I was reading the scriptures yesterday, the Lord brought this word to me. And I've learned that this is a prophetic house. So what he said to one, he says to all. And the Lord said to me, 41, 13, he said, for high the Lord, your God, I will hold your right hand saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. I've come to say to somebody today that the Lord said that you should fear not. Look at your right hand. Look at the right hand. Look at it. Look at it. Now, the Lord is holding that right hand. The Lord is holding that right hand. You say, Fear not, I will help you. Look at your neighbor and say, Fear not. It's an instruction, it's a command. He said, Fear not, I will help you. Fear not, I will help you. Verse 15. He said, Behold. Anytime you see the word behold, I've taught you, change the word behold to see. It helps you understand it better, right? So see, I will make you a new threshing sledge which shaps it. You shall thresh the mountains. There might be mountains before you. He said to tell you, you shall thresh the mountains and beat them small. And make chaff. Have you seen chaff before? You know that thing that that remains of a coal that is burning. It's called chaff. The Bible says you will make eels and then they will become like chaff. Glory to God. And what does the next verse say? You shall winnow them, and the wind shall carry them away. And the wild wind shall scatter them. You shall rejoice in the Lord, and glory in the Holy One of Israel. Can somebody rejoice in the Lord? Can somebody rejoice in the Lord? Hallelujah. You will notice I brought a book to stay today because as the Lord speaks to me, I will be speaking to you what he says. Now listen, 
On the third day of June, the Lord said to me, and to tell you that this is the month to apply for jobs. If you want a new job or you want a change of jobs, the Lord said to tell you that this month, send out as many applications as possible. The Lord bless you. You know I'm not looking for a job. All right. I am well employed. But if that is you, if you have a friend that is in that corner, tell the person. Because surely, as he has spoken, he will also do. Second Chronicles 20, 20. Believe the Lord your God, you will be established. Believe his prophets. And you will do what? You will prosper. All right, very quickly, let's go to God's word. I, I, the spirit of the Lord has helped me to preach the sermon I want to preach. Glory to God. Amen. All right, Isaiah 11. And then we'll read verses 1 to 2. Isaiah 11, verses 1 to 2. And Luke chapter 4, and then verse 18. Isaiah 11, verses 1 to 2. Isaiah 11, and then we read verses 1 to 2. There's such a sweet aroma of God in this place today. Such a sweet, sweet, sweet fragrance of God in his house today. Uh, if I were you, as I preach, I would also begin to pray. I will continue to pray, even as I hear the word. Why? Because where the presence of the Lord is, there is healing, there is liberty, and there is deliverance. Glory to God. And the Bible says, There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon, who is he going to rest on? The branch, this branch, this branch that comes out of Jesse. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Now, you've heard people say the seventh spirit of the Lord. Have you heard it before? That they say the seventh spirit of the Lord. And you are wondering, where is the seventh spirit? I only know of the Holy Spirit, right? Today you are going to see them. This is number one, the seventh spirit. They say number one, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Number two, the spirit of wisdom. Number three, understanding. Number four, the spirit of counsel. Number five, might. Number six, knowledge. And then seven, the fear of the Lord. Can you see how many are there? These are what is called the seven expressions or the seven influences uh, even of the spirit upon the believer. Luke chapter 4 and then verse 18. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. I think we did that. We read that last week. If you are not here last week, um, I want to encourage you to get that sermon. How, how many of us still are still basking in that, in that service, in the glory of that service? Glory be to God. I was chatting with somebody. I said, have you recovered? I said, sir, don't ask me that kind of question again. I never want to recover. I pray for you, you will never recover from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. This was Jesus speaking because he has anointed me to pray the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives uh, and recovery of sight to the blind, uh, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, uh, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Uh, he's saying I was able to do all of these things. Why? He said because the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Father, thank you. Because the word you have given to me, I want to give to your people. Father, I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer. Lord, I write the word of life upon the spirit of your people. After now, make us better people. Let us walk according to your counsel, O God. Father, let the purpose for sending your word be fulfilled. Daddy, I ask that the sweet spirit of God will enforce your word. Father, this word is not sent because there is nothing else to do. It's sent because you have an agenda to transform the lives of your people. Lord, let that transformation happen now. In Jesus' name and amen. Please have your seat in God's presence. Hallelujah. Amen. I I'm speaking to you on what I've titled the sweet influences of the spirit. Look at your neighbor and say sweet influences. Sweet influences of the spirit. Uh, when you came in here, uh, oh, right now, do you, do, you, do you feel the sweetness in the atmosphere? Uh, talk to me. Do you feel the influence, the sweetness of the atmosphere? Uh, now, let me begin by saying that we live in a time that many believers have reduced the Holy Spirit uh, or the person of the Spirit to mere expression in language, right? For many of them, uh, for many people, when you ask them the question, do you have the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, the answer is yes, and then they give you the evidence by speaking in tongues. So that for them, the Holy Spirit is, uh, tongues is all there is to the Holy Spirit. Tongues is all of it. It's not part of it. It's all of it. Uh, and, um, and that's what they see. But oh, how mistaken we are. Listen to this. Praying in tongues is important. Uh, can I say that to somebody again? 
Praying in tongues is important, but it is not all there is to the person of the Holy Ghost. Praying in tongues is essential, but it is not all there is to the Holy Spirit. We have become what we call a reductionist generation. Um, we have become what we call a reductionist generation. There is something called reductionism. Have you heard that word before? Reductionism? Uh, okay, so if you have not listened carefully, I will teach you. That's why you came to church. Glory to God. All right, reductionism is analyzing and describing complex phenomena by their basic constituents. Right? That's reductionism. It is uh, describing complex phenomena. Um, um, okay, if you are trying to get on the screen and see whether I'll put it on screen, there's no slide. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because um, I'm actually trying to see some things. So last week, there was no slide also, right? Um, it was also intentional. I gave them, I gave them some verses. I, I want to compare three things and see which one works best and see whether I go back to the slides, right? Because I discovered that certain times people would just keep looking at the slides without hearing the sound. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So now you don't have slides. You look at me and then you hear what I'm saying and then you write your notes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. So I spoke about reductionism and I said that reductionism, it's uh, trying to describe complex phenomena by their basic constituents, uh, meaning that um, you reduce things uh, uh, that are so complex, but you describe them by what is very basic, uh, what is very basic. For, for instance, uh, you've heard people say blocks is all you need to build a house. Glory to God. Like blocks is all you need to build a house. All right? So all I need to do, engineers, is this true? That I just have to just buy blocks and then I'll be able to build a house. You know, that's basic. It's important part of building a house, uh, but it is not all there is uh, to building a house. When you make such statements, uh, what you are doing is actually reductionism. Hallelujah. You've had people also say that good grace are all you need to lead a successful life. Uh, I mean, you've, uh, you've, now you have entered the market. Now you have entered the labor market and you have discovered that good grace it is not all there is uh, to lead in a successful life. But that's what they say. Uh, it, it's essential uh, and it's a basic part of leading a successful life, but it is not all there is. It's again that principle of reductionism. You've heard people say if you can pray, you will change your life. Uh, now that again is very spiritual, it's high sounding, but it is not all there is to changing your life. Again, that statement is reductionism. Uh, we have reduced a lot of things in the Christian faith uh, to this to their simple and fundamental constituents. Uh, and one of the primary negatives of reductionism is the distortion. Can I say that to somebody again? One of the basic problems of reductionism is distortion. Distortion of truth. Distortion. You begin to distort uh, truth. So today in the body of Christ, there's a lot of misrepresentation, perversion, twisting, and falsification. Uh, the result of that is that we are soon basking in hell. For starters, can I say to you that praying in tongues is a hit? The Holy Spirit is a he. Do you understand? Praying in tongues is it. IT. That means when you talk about expressions of tongues, you're talking about it. But the Holy Spirit is a person. It's a him. So that you cannot just say that that's all there is. Praying in tongues is a vocal expression. The Holy Spirit is a person. People take, make statements and leave out reductionist values. And I've seen it. You will hear people say, God is love. God is love. He loves me. I can never make hell. How oh, glory to God. So it doesn't matter what I do. That again is reductionism. God cannot be God because he is love alone. What makes God God is also because he's merciful. It's also because he's just. Without justice, he will not be God. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So that love is an essential part of God, but love is not all there is to God. You hear people say, oh, Jesus is grace. No, sir. Jesus is also our savior. Glory to God. So, apart from Jesus being grace, although that's a basic and fundamental constituent of who he is, his reduction is reduction to that's all there is to him. And people also have said the Holy Spirit is anointing. But the Holy Spirit, according to scriptures, is not just the anointing. The Holy Spirit is also the comforter. The Holy Spirit is also he that convicts the word of their sins. Do you see what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit is also truth. So that it's also called the spirit of truth. So that he is not only the anointing and is only praying in tongues. Uh, it is reductionism to believe that tongues is all there is uh, to the person of the Holy Spirit. Do you see what I'm saying? Today I want to say something to you that is so powerful. I want to share with you something I believe that will change and transform your life. I believe that many times in our generation, we follow the crowd and say things that we do not have an understanding of. 
right? So that many people today just stop at praying in tongues and they believe they are walking in the fullness of the Spirit. Can I say that to you again? Right? If I, if I, if I meet you on the road and I ask you, do you have, you, have you met the Holy Ghost? Do you have a walk with the Holy Ghost? He said, you know, I prayed in five, five hours yesterday. Glory to God. That's just a grammatical expression. You understand what I'm saying? So if that is all you have of the Holy Spirit, you are reducing the benefit of him in your life. Listen, the key to the miraculous and power is what I want to share with you today. I'm about to open to you new frontiers. Dimensions of God that will change your life. No one has walked with God in this dispensation without an understanding of the powers and the influences of the Holy Spirit. This year, right here, is a teaching about the influences and the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of every believer. You are not assessing him enough, and that's why you are not satisfied. Some people believe that they pray in tongues, and sometimes they even sin. Have you seen people who sin? Maybe they sleep with somebody, or maybe they just finish masturbation, and then they say, Makato palakata, but I try it all. I can still speak in tongues. Glory to God, he's still with me. That's a grammatical expression. Whether you leave Nigeria or not, you will still speak in Yoruba because that is a language you have learned. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can be in the U.S. and still speak Yoruba. So, so that it does not mean that God is pleased with you that you can speak in tongues. So the, you have to find an understanding and know that there is greater to God and to the Holy Spirit than just praying in tongues. Do you know this may shock you that Jesus never spoke in tongues? Jesus never spoke in tongues. Can I, can I say that to somebody again? Because you see, the way we make it look is that tongues is actually the most important thing in this world. And the Bible says in Luke chapter 4 verse 1 that Jesus was full of the Spirit. And yet, he never spoke in tongues. Wow. I think sometimes you need to take a break in church and let that sink in. Right? So let that just sink in. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. But he was full of the Spirit. Yet... He never spoke in tongues. I told you last week of a man called Billy Graham. And I said in Billy Graham crusade, I, I told you that Billy Graham is one of the greatest evangelists that ever lived. In fact, it is said that he's the only, he was one man that has led many to Christ than others. In Billy Graham crusade, thousands and millions give their life to Christ. Listen to this. They don't speak in tongues. Can I say that to you again? So that if you think that it is the tongues that drives people to the kingdom, you are wasting your time. People get to the kingdom without tongues. Tongues is a basic and essential attribute of God, but it is not all there is to the Holy Spirit. That is reductionism. You get reductionism now. Right. Now there is a woman who told us, who called herself the handmaiden of God. It was through our ministry and our life that we have come to an understanding of the power and the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of believers in this generation. Her name is Katrikuman. Katrikuman, you see, in Katrikuman crusade, Katrikuman says, I don't heal people. So it is never said that Katrikuman lay hands on the sick to be healed. Are you following what I'm saying? But in our meetings, the dead are raised. In our meetings, People stand up from which years in our meetings. She doesn't lay hands so that you can be healed. But the power of the Holy Spirit, the influence of the Spirit in the atmosphere heals people. Now this will shock you. In Katrikuman crusades and in Katrikuman meetings, Katrikuman never allows anyone to pray in tongues. She herself never prays in tongues publicly. How come there is such power? Because you see, people have come in this generation to think and believe that if we want to see the power of the spirit, then we have to first of all charge up the atmosphere. Have you have you? Ekele, Obo, and you do one hour. All of those are emotionalism. Is getting ourselves charged up. It has nothing to do with the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not need to be charged up, it's you that need to be charged up. It's, his battery is always full. It's you that needs charging. And I tell people, it depends on how your week has gone. That determines the amount of charging you will need. Jude one twenty. Say, build up yourself on your most holy faith, praying the Holy Ghost. That word build up is the word edify, which means to charge up. So that if you have not read your Bible throughout the week, your charging will need like three hours before you can even enter into the realm. But if you had stayed in his presence, you would not even need five minutes charging. So that our generation, because of our lifestyle, needs a lot of charging. That's why we keep talking about tongues that way. 
Because every day of the week, we go on Instagram, we go on things, uh, we see things that leaves us from the place, that takes us away from the place of consecration. And because we are not in the place of consecration, we need a lot of charging up. But that's not all there is to the Holy Spirit. Am I disturbing your head? Now, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. John 14, 26, the Bible says, and when the comforter is come, he who is the Holy Ghost, Jesus was speaking, he who is the Holy Spirit. He said he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance the things which I have told you. So one of the basic elements of the Holy Ghost is that the Holy Spirit will move in a teaching anointing. And I told you that last week. Is that not so? Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1, the Bible says, God who has sundry times uh, has spoken to the fathers uh, are, are these days chosen to speak to us through his son. You see, the days he was talking about, he was talking about the disciples who lived and saw Jesus on the house. So before he said he spoke to the fathers. That was the prophet. God spoke to the fathers. But when they saw Jesus, he spoke to the son. But you did not see the son. And you did not see the father. So he's going to speak to you through his spirit. Therefore, the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, that the spirit speaks expressly. Is somebody following my discussion? So you see that it is possible for you and I to actually assess the Holy Spirit uh, better than we do. But the reason we are not is because we have conscripted him to blocks is all that takes to make a building. So we want to build a church. Let's buy 10,000 blocks. Blocks is all that needs to build a church. It's, it's, you see, when people make such statements, uh, they are making reductionist statements. And believers have become reductionists in their brain and in their mindset. People don't want to follow the ways and the act of God and they want to see God in action because they pray in tongues. Glory to God. <laughs> because Jesus is love. He has not, he's, when it comes to sin, he's blinded. He doesn't care what I think. It does not matter my consecration level because he's love. He's not a dummy sweetheart. He's got a will. He's a just God. It takes justice for a God to send you to heaven and hell. It's a just God. Glory to God. These are fundamental. You see, when you say you appeal to joy, even on the heart, you appeal to the court, what are you seeking for? Justice. We know that Gif Shishi is in court looking for what? Justice. Justice. If there is no justice, it's just loving, 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 loving. Then how will he deal with your enemies? How will he save you from your wicked neighbor? How will he save you? Love is not all there is to Jesus. He's more than that. Help me put to your neighbor and say love is not all there is to Jesus. But you see, the sermon today is what you will help me preach to her or him in a better way. That tongues is not all there is to the Holy Spirit. Now, I'll give you permission to pray in the Spirit one minute. Can you pray in the Spirit? You have a prayer language, pray in tongues. That's to tell you I'm not against it. Pray in tongues. Enjoy it, enjoy it. Glory to God. It's an heavenly language. He who speaks in an unknown tongue, speaks not unto man, but unto God. For no man understands what he says, but in the spirit they render mysteries. Bible says divine secret. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Can your amen resound like believers? Amen. Glory to God. When I say in Jesus' name, I'm not looking for attention. Let your amen be resounding in this house. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Amen, me so be it. Is the stamp on your prayers. Listen, let me quickly run here. Isaiah 11, 2. The Bible listed the expressions of the Holy Spirit. And these expressions are what you should see in your life. If you cannot find these influences in your life, then there is an issue. And I want us to get into that place and in that time where we begin to look for these expressions in our life. Number one expression of the person of the Holy Spirit, which should be in the life of every believer, is that he is the Spirit of the Lord. Now that is powerful. He is not just the Spirit of the Word, he is the Spirit of the Lord. Listen very carefully. If you will have an understanding that the spirit that is in you is the spirit of the Lord, you'll be careful where you go to. You'll be careful how you speak. 
You will be careful the things uh, you think about. Because the spirit that is in you is not the spirit of your father. It's not the spirit of your village. Glory to God. You see people talking about demons now. It's not the spirit of your village. It's the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord. If you will walk in and see impact, you will be tremendously anointed. Anytime you climb the pulpit, anytime you step on the stage, even to pitch, pitch an idea in your place of work, when you understand that the spirit that is in you is the spirit of the Lord, you pitch it differently. You speak differently. You talk with audacity and temerity because it's not just you. Who backs up the words of his prophet is the God of Israel. Is the one who backs it up and therefore you speak with confidence, with temerity because he is the spirit of the Lord. It's not me. He's the spirit of the Lord. Why is it that Kachikuman could just raise his hands in an auditorium and power breaks out? It's because she has an understanding. The spirit is the spirit of the Lord. What I minister is not the spirit of this world. It's the spirit of the Lord. Bible says in Romans chapter 8, uh, scripture says, uh, I believe in verse 11, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is not of his. There is a spirit and it's the spirit of Christ inside every believer. It's the spirit of Christ. It was that same self, self same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. The Bible says, if the spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, it's not a, it's no longer if. Are you born again? The Bible says, if Okay, so how do I convert this if to a reality? If the spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. Is that not what scripture says? But listen to this. Listen to this. And this is very important. <laughs> this is very, very important. This is very key. Now, if the spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, can I ask you, how can I know he dwells in me? The moment you become born again, the spirit of the Lord moves inside of you. Now, the Bible says if, so I no longer say if. Because now I know he's in me. Is somebody listening to me? So what will happen? He said, if the spirit of him that is God from death dwells in you, he said, he will quicken your mortal bodies. Now the same spirit is in me, my body is quickened. Listen, that is the idea you have that makes you stop sickness in your life. People who live 80, 90 and have an understanding of the Zoe life, it is this thing that I'm speaking that they have an understanding of. That the spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. It's going to raise my mortal body. I'm quick into life. You can see me. I may be weak. I do not look at the things which I see. Because the things which I see are temporal. The things which are not seen, they are the eternal things. The Holy Spirit is not an option for the believer. It's not makayaba kapeshekepelekepete. First, before you start praying that tongues, where is it coming from? Do you understand that the oasis it flows from is the place of the, of the Lord? Is the spirit of the Lord. Is the spirit of the Lord. I used to see somebody listening to me in Luke chapter 9, verse 55. Luke 9, 55. Jesus' disciples who are going and the sons of Boanegas were very angry. He said, let us cause, let us cause this land. <laughs> Jesus said, you know not the spirit that you carry. You don't just say it. If you say it, it will happen. Because the spirit you carry is the spirit of the Lord. Be careful what you say. Be careful the words you say. What you say are very powerful. Because you are not just speaking. He who is joined with the Lord. Scripture says he is one spirit with him. I remember that day many years ago. I got married to my wife. And the, 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 the man of God, Reverend Bimini Yeboda, asked that simple question. He said, do you take this woman as your love? I said, yes. So, uh, why do you think we came? I, I take her as my lovely wedded wife. She said the same thing. And he said, these two are no longer two. They have become one. And I looked at myself. I was still wearing my trousers. She was still in her gown. How can we become one? It is oneness in spirit and in action. Listen to this. When we say you and the spirit are one, it is oneness in spirit, oneness in action, oneness in influence, oneness in thought, oneness in ways. You and the Holy Ghost. So that we should not know where your spirit stop and where the Holy Spirit stops. You can't just make decisions because you feel like it. The sweet influences of the spirit is that it will begin to influence you to make decisions for himself and by himself. You know, how do I know this? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and then you begin reading from verse 9, the Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has he entered into the mind of man, the thing which God has in prepared, what he has in store for them that love him. I tell people, you know me now, you don't know my 10 years. 
You don't know my five years. But listen, you can tell people that, but those of us who are of the Spirit can tell. Because we know the possibilities of the Spirit is your possibilities. We might not be able to tell you 100% in 3D how it looks like, but we know that your future is bright. Ah, yeah. Why? Because the part of the just is as the shining light. It shines more and more onto the perfect day. You might be walking on the street of Lagos today. We know that that bench is in the future. Without your who is coming. It is what we know that every night remains uh, seed, time, and harvest. It will come. It will come. You know, the spirit of the Lord. It's the assurance that you have. That's why you don't come again when we say Otako. Because you have the spirit of the Lord. He bears witness with your spirit. According to Romans chapter 8, verse 16. That you are children of God. He bears witness with your spirit. It bears witness with your spirit. Without the witness, the people will come to the front 20 times. Don't let them not to come. You came, you came last week. Let him come again. Let him keep coming. Until the spirit of the Lord bears witness with his spirit. If not, the spirit will still convict him. And when he's convicted, he will come out. The power of conviction, he will come out. A day would come, he will say, no, I know. Now I know. Now I know. Just like some of you now know. Somebody asked me, I was telling somebody to give her life to Christ. He said, I said, where are you going? After now. Are you sure you're going to heaven? He said, he said uh, you know how generation Z speaks. <laughs> no one can be sure. You can't know these things. It, it seems like simple, simple knowledge. And then she threw it back to me. Uh, do you even know where you're going? I said, 100% I'm going to heaven. 100% if I die now, I am going to be fellowshipping with heaven. You can cry here, yeah, but I am going to be rejoicing in the seat of heaven. Why? Because I know like I know my name. It's bearing witness in my spirit. The spirit of the Lord. You see, when you have the spirit of the Lord, there are things you don't make decisions. You, there are decisions you make that you won't make anymore. Those are the influences of the Holy Ghost. Something which just tells you, go walk. I see. Walana. You just be hearing those things. You, you know. You, you can, in the physical, you can tell this brother is handsome. Mm. Omoto, fine girl, looking Lexus. Glory to God. She looks everything. But something in your heart tells you, gagam, gagam, gagam. Signal, signal, signal of the spirit. You know, I told you, this is the training for the school of the spirit. Gagam, something is not right. They say, you are not dating again. I'm not dating. Ah, you lose a good lady. You say, yes, I agree. You know, something is not right. You can't place it. You can't tell it. But something is not right. Believers are losing money because they don't have the spirit. They don't listen to the spirit of the Lord. That's why you buy stock and it fails. The spirit of the Lord. Look at your name and say the spirit of the Lord. Can you see the amount of graces we carry? And yet we just limit the person of the Holy Spirit to praying in tongues. And some of them, the way it even sounds, you know, every since 10 years he's been the Holy Spirit himself came and said, Keep quiet. Let me introduce you to new levels. The reason you are still in mana mana level is because you are don't have a walk with the Holy Ghost. There's no walk with the Spirit. Tell your neighbor, thank God you came. How do you engage these things? Because I'll, I'll tell you how to engage it. How do you engage the Spirit of the Lord? Number one, keep saying, Holy Spirit, help me. Before you make that decision who to marry, Holy Spirit, help me. You want to write an exam? Holy Spirit, help me. Ask for his help. He is a, perfect, he is a perfectly awesome, gentle spirit. If he does not talk where he is not needed, stop carrying resources around without using him. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. Many times believers, God, the Lord want to speak. He want to direct you. But you just pray in tongues. Even when you are done two hours, the Holy Spirit says, let me titrate information. You know, you are too busy. Because after that two hours, you are already on the highway. No time. Some of you don't even have devotional time. On the road. The road. On the highway, on the highway. That's how you... And then on the background, you know who's on the background now. Two fellows. Holy Spirit says, Park now. 
Park now. There is going to be an accident. Park now. Oh, Ligbo. Every the noise around you. You don't listen. You don't listen. The spirit of the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say the spirit of the Lord. The second influence of the spirit is the spirit of wisdom. The anointing comes in the form of wisdom. The anointing comes like it did upon Christ by granting Christ the divine ability for wisdom. And now Christ is in you. Look at this scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. Can I have that very quickly? 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and then verse 24. I want to show you something there. Listen to this. It's very important that when you read scriptures, you read it in the way it is written. Not that you put your ideas in it. Right? Now look at that. Can we read that together? One, two, three, go. Read like educated folks, right? So, no, there's a way people read it. Man, and, uh, you know, the spirit is not there. All right, so read with power, right? All right, let's go. One, two, three, go. But to those who are called, O oh, Jews and Greek, Christ, the power of God, and the way. Paul, an educated guy who had the spirit of the Lord, says something there that you have never really noticed. He said, he, he said but both Jews and Greek, he didn't say Jesus, the power of God. He said, Christ. The power of God because he wanted you to see the expression of the anointing because when we talk about Christ he's talking about the anointed one Jesus is a title titular position out there but Christ is about the anointing the Messiah they were expecting he said Christ that means by the anointing he is the power and the wisdom of God so without the anointing is not the power and the wisdom of God do you see that so that it is the only spirit don't forget the bible says in first john chapter 2 verse 21 the bible says to us that that that, that we have an anointing from the holy one 220 we have an anointing from the holy one and we know all things all things all things so the bible did not say you know mass what did he say answer me did he say spiritual things no talk to me talk to me all things why is it that you learn a skill you don't get it? The Bible says you know what? Please define all for me. What does all mean? What does all mean? In your booming book, all everything. I know everything. So that people misjudge the spirits and people settle for less by only thinking the spirit helps them as they read the book of Ephesians. But the spirit helps even as you read medicine. Do you know that one of the, great, the greatest inventors that has lived in this world were Christians, believers? John Newton. These guys were believers. There is an anointing. There is, you see, after you have done the science part, there's an anointing that shifts things to you in order to shift you forward. I have an anointing from the Holy One. Can you tell your neighbor, I have the anointing from the Holy One? No, you see, the way you say it, you need to say it like you've got news for them. You know how we say it. I've got news for you. I've got news for you. I have an anointing from the Holy Word. What is wisdom? Wisdom means that which is unborn. Which is unborn, which is unbatted. That which pertains to the future. So when we say you have an anointing or you have wisdom, we are saying that you have access to things that have not yet happened. A believer shouldn't marry wrong. He has a spirit of wisdom. What did I say? Listen to this. Before I got married, I knew I could never marry wrong because I had the anointing. I had the anointing. It's not that I spoke in tongues. You can speak in tongues and marry wrong. Both of you hold each other's hand like the man no break. I didn't marry wrong. Marry wrong. Marry wrong. Very wrong. Wrong, wrong. But you see, I have an anointing. I can see that this woman will change in the future. I can see that this brother is not a brother. This one is a ladder to the devil's side. I can see. I can see. The Holy Spirit becomes the revealer of things to come. He, 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 he becomes, uh, he reveals things to you. You know, Paul operated in the gift of wisdom. Acts chapter 23. They told him, they said, things are going to happen to you in Jerusalem. He said, I know. He said, Brie already told me. 23, 11, Acts 23. Act 23, verse 11. He said he already knows. He, he knows what was going to take place. It's because he was functioning with a spirit that others don't have. You see, the, 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 the things I'm teaching you is like the school of ministry. It's the school of the spirit. So these are, these are not things you hear on every Sunday. But these are the things you need for your life. 
The spirit of wisdom. Through these gifts, God makes the believer wise to the future. And you know what is going to take place. Have you ever known that something will happen? And somebody will do something? You call it an intuition. With the guess right. He shut up. Shut up. It's because you have not been listening. You have not trained yourself. This is, you see, when somebody just by mistake enter into a sphere, if you will train yourself, it can become your regular space of living. Training. Training. You, you, have, you got it right twice in 2022. And you are celebrating. Do you know how many you got wrong? If you will get it right every day, your life will be better. Your life will be better. You see, spirit of wisdom. I, I remember one day I was walking in, in the church. I was just going. I was just going. I, and the Holy Ghost said to me, He said, That lady, call her. Pray for her right now. The door is about to open. Pray for her right now. And I called her, sat down with her. And I said, Madam, how are you doing? And I said, The Lord said, I should pray for you concerning a job. You are going to get a job now. And I prayed for her. That week she came to Lagos, got a job. Fantastic. Federal government job. Big girl. Agency. She loved it. Glory to God. I became a mighty prophet. Hallelujah. And so she was dating a man. And so the man too had not gotten a job. Glory to God. So she called. You know, that's what you also do. Ah, Woli, that Woli, that prayed. Let's go and meet the Woli. And then she came to me and said, Ah, I'm thinking my fiance should come to you for prayers. I said, The Lord did not say anything. It was the Lord that said it that I prayed. That, don't, don't, don't turn me to. That's how you turn many people to faith prophet. I'm not under pressure for expressions of any gift. Glory to God. I am satisfied where I am. I said to I said, hey, Lord, but when he, this one is prayer and fasting. The Lord, if the Lord now says something, I will call you. But I mean, since that time, the Lord has not said anything. Glory to God. Glory to God. So you see, that's the spirit of wisdom in oppression. In oppression. I remember, ah, you've heard this story again and again, and you will hear it again. Glory be to God. I was about to close the door of my house in Beijing. Glory be to God. I was about to close the door of my house. And the Lord said, Today. Today. Today you shall meet your wife. Today. I was not, listen to this. I, I, I was not thinking about woman. I was praying for the anointing of the spirit. I was in the school of, of, of ministry. I was training to become a minister, a prophet. I, I, so, so in the school of the prophet's wife is not the problem. I was not interested in that. I was interested in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I was interested in catching the spirit of the fathers. And the Lord said to me, no, today you will meet your wife. I, I, I started laughing. I, I opened the door back and I said, laughing. I said, Sir, you, are, ah, you are going to a wedding, you will meet your wife. Oh, you cannot. I thought you, have dead, you are dead to these things. Glory be to God. I, as I closed the door and I went out of that place, the Lord said to me again, Today you shall meet your wife. And suddenly I went to that place and a woman, black, dark, looked at me in her face. And, and suddenly, and she said to me, and She said to me, ah, She said, I said, I'm going. She said, No, 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 please, hold this, hold, hold it for me. She held me down. As she heard me down, the Lord said to me, that is her. That is her. The spirit of wisdom. You can know the future. All these guests walking, that is why you are using your life like this game of Tolo Tolo. How do they call it in Yoruba? You are just playing draft with your life. You can know. There is a spirit of wisdom. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of wisdom. It is not just for tongues. That is reductionism. May the Lord deliver you from reductionism. That your hey amen, I told you is lame. May the Lord deliver you from reductionism. Amen. I remember when I was going to travel and I saw that I was going to die. I saw myself in the coffin. Glory be to God. I said to myself, me, oh Lord, because I'm not going anywhere. My dad called me and said, Ah, who are food? Some people are fighting with you in the place of work. I said, Don't worry, sir. We have already said to If I did not see it, I would have died. And you people will be crying now. There will be ransom house. Or maybe somebody will come and do ransom church. Because they would have taken the vision in another way. Glory be to God. But you see, let me say this to you. You can preserve your generation by the spirit of wisdom. He died young. Many of your generation will die young because they don't use wisdom. Somebody's driving you is drunk. You are in the car. Do you need the Holy Spirit? Do you need the Holy Spirit? The guy is going on a road. At night, doing 140. And you are singing. Now, there was, and you know this is Nigeria. Portals don't write letters to you. When he sees a portal, that's the end. And people say, ah, no, 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 no. He died of foolishness. Died of, you will preserve your life by wisdom. The spirit of wisdom. These are things that the Holy Ghost is ready to do in your life. It's not, and he prayed and he died. No, he lacked wisdom. 
He didn't allow the Holy Ghost to express himself in his life. Some people are poor, not because poverty is in their lineage. They are poor because they will not listen to instruction from the Spirit. Number three. Look at him and say, number three. No, 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 no. How do you engage this? By asking the Holy Spirit to reveal himself and the future to you. There's a song I used to sing. Don't mind my voice, it does not really matter. Mighty, mighty revealer, mighty, mighty revealer. Come, reveal your power, mighty, mighty revealer. Come, reveal your grace, Lord, mighty, mighty revealer. You can't find it anywhere. I composed it myself. Just me and the Holy Ghost in the room. That's how we sing it. One hour. Mighty, mighty revealer. Mighty, mighty revealer. So some people will say, I genuinely say, hey, knows things. Ah, it's the song. It's the koinonia. As you are praying in tongue, manko, shima, kampa, tili, utu, 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 utu. Me, I'm saying, I'm engaging wisdom. I'm engaging wisdom. I'm engaging wisdom. I'm engaging wisdom. It is wisdom to pray in tongues. But it is much more wisdom to listen to the Holy Ghost. And to know what to engage. Can we go to number three very quickly? Am I helping somebody here? Number three. is called the spirit of understanding. It is the spirit that helps us understand spiritual truth. Man of God, look for Daniel 117 for me. So that we won't stay there for long. Daniel 117, Daniel 120, and then Daniel 5, 11 to 12. I want to show them something there. Listen, it doesn't only help you to understand spiritual truth, it helps you in understanding all truths. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. The Bible says, I pray the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that Paul was praying. He said, I may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now, wisdom is not different from revelation. That word and in the Greek actually means in. That means he will give unto you the spirit of wisdom in revelation. That means via revelation you will come to wisdom. You get that? In, so that you will understand that it's just one spirit. That your eyes of understanding may be enlightened. Without a revelational knowing, which the Greek call epignosis, which is full knowledge, you will never come even to a full understanding. I hope I'm not getting too complicated for you. Eh? You are following. So that they won't say too much written has made him mad. Daniel 117, glory to God. <clears throat> Daniel 117, I want to run here. Daniel 117. As for these four young men, are you young in this house? Are you young in this house? Are you old in this house? Uh -huh. I, 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 I want to be sure that there was no old person. Everybody is young. Glory to God. All right. Young in the spirit. The Bible says, as for these four young men, God gave them. What did he give them? Knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. Now, those are those four guys. Now, Daniel was different. God now gave him Jara. Apart from giving him what he gave others, he also now said that they had understanding in all wisdom and visions. Now, God gave them knowledge and skill in what? In reading Bible. Eh? In all. What is your vocation? You sculpture there. Engineering is there. Realtor is there. Can you follow what I'm saying? Tech is there. Can you see what I'm saying? Accounting is there. In all wisdom. In all literature and wisdom. Because it is via reading of literature that you also come to wisdom. So that many people have problems that they read and they don't understand. It's because they have not entered into this place. Oh, that literature is very difficult. You know, there are people that say, ah, that engineering textbook, that particular one. Oh, hard. In all wisdom. In all literature. Who wrote it? Whoever wrote it is under the guise of God. 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 Now, is that, give me verse 20. I, 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 I'm showing them something so that they will understand. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding, about which the king examined them, they will find what? Christians are not Rupo. You should not be at the back. You should not be at the back. They were found how many times? In pharmacy. You must be ten times better. Do you get what I'm saying? 
It's there in scriptures. Now give me Daniel 5. Wisdom. She, I want to show you that that wisdom they gave them was the spirit. I'll show you now. Give me Daniel 5. 5, 11 to 12. You see, you might have been missing church before. You cannot afford to be missing church now. Because you are in the school of learning. Daniel 5. Now look at that. Now something had happened. There was a challenge before the king. And the king was sad. The mother, the queen mother, was the one who said this. This was not the word of uh, God. This is the word of the queen mother. This is supposed to be the word of an unbeliever. Now listen to it. He said, there is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy God. It wasn't that he was speaking in tongues. Man of God. Man of God. You know, I told you Jesus is not speaking in tongues. And in the days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, is an unbeliever saying it. So you don't expect her to say like the wisdom of, of Yahweh. Say of gods were well, found in him. And King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father the king, made him chief of the magicians, astrologers, chardians, and said, in as much as what? An excellent spirit is a spirit. Knowledge, understanding, interpreting dreams, solving riddles, explaining enigmas. I found it is Daniel. Whom the king named Belshazzar. Now let Daniel be called. He didn't, she didn't, she didn't delete Dali. There's no problem here. He said, now let Daniel be called. Now let Pisayo be called. Now let George be called. Now let Obina be called. Now let Obola be called. Let Selim be called. And there will be an interpretation. The generation is still waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. They are waiting for interpretations from us. We are not giving them interpretations because we are not letting the spirit move in us. The spirit of wisdom. The difference between believers and unbelievers should be like light and day. Night and day. Get wisdom, get understanding, Solomon said. Listen to this. I, 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 I'm sure you one of my instructors, uh, the man by the name of Miles Muru. Masmuro uh, was chronicling his childhood experience. Uh, and he said he, he used to be a very dull child. A dull child. As, and he said it wasn't him alone. It was all like all his family, his brothers, all of them were just dull. Right, dull, dull. You know, when you can agree that you are dull, then you are dull. Glory to God. You know, there are people you say they are dull and they get angry. But there are people when you now start saying I'm dull, you know that that's, that's dull, dull. Glory to God. So he, he was saying that, I mean, he was dull, dull. Glory to God. And he said his father had done everything, but this dulling thing will not leave them. Glory to God. It's what you call dullard when they get to that level. Praise God. And he said something happened. And, and this is very key. He said his father said that from today, every night, all of you, you'll be reading the book of wisdom. And you know what the book of wisdom is? The books of wisdom. That's Proverbs, Psalms, Ecclesiastes. Every night before you people sleep, I can't help you anymore. But if there is a God that can help you, you will be reading it. And they started reading it. Three, three chapters every day. Three, three chapters every day. Moreau said something happened to him. Something sparked in him. He said from the last in class, he became the first in class. Just by, you know, he sat with wisdom. The spirit entered him. You read these books, you see the leadership concept, the, the purpose concept, the kingdom concept. Uh, all you will see, you will know that these things from scriptures. It just has a grace like Daniel to interpret it in the language of a generation. What will you interpret in your generation? What will you interpret in your generation? Are you, do you understand what I'm saying? Wisdom. I sat down with Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. I have told people before, I school of ministry, I have opportunity to preach. I preach on roots. Are you following me? I preach on Moses. Because they are stories. So they are easy to preach on. You know, Moses came and then God told Moses not to get out. And so, I mean, you know, you have to obey God. And I'll be sweating. You know, you preach on Joshua. Joshua, Joshua sat down with Moses. You need to sit down with the prophet of God. Hallelujah. And I was sharing revelations that are stories. From the whole testament. Because when I read anything in that New Testament, especially when you get to Colossians, every Shias, Thessalonians, all those near Shias, they became very problematic. Because there's no background story to the saints. Uh -huh. You know, when you read Genesis, he said, and the people, and then you start talking, there was a people. But this one just to the saints in Colossians who are heard in Christ and hears of the things of God. And then you begin to say, To your Lord. What do I teach in this? But I knew that God has called me not an Old Testament minister, but a New Testament minister. In which I know there is the spirit and there is a life that comes with the spirit, a New Testament believer. 
And I sat down that day. Many days and I began. Of course, I found Kenneth Hagin said that he sat down and began to pray the Pauline prayer. So, so I took Ephesians 1, 17 to 18. That my eyes of understanding may be open. That I may see. No, he didn't say open. That might be enlightened. There's a difference between open and lighted. Can I tell you the difference? And some of you look at me very shocked. What's the difference? Oh, God, what's the difference. And I'll tell you today. Glory be to God. Your eyes might be open and you will not see anything. Okay, so somebody said, one day near. <laughs> I will prove it to you. You can enter this room and I told you, selling 50 million day here inside one bag. And I put it in a corner and I shut the door, shut out the light. It was 9 p.m. at night. You will be crawling like this with your eyes shut, open, but you didn't see anything. You'll be crying. Like, you will be a quarter to to reach that money. You will turn again and you'll be moving around. It's an open eyes. But you see, if I would come in and with mercy, and I just own the light, she will see the treasure very fast. When the Lord owns the light, you will find treasures in scriptures very fast. Do you get the difference now? Enlightenment is different. So, what is it that I am saying? Where did I start from? How did I get there? Glory to God. So, we, you, and then I began to pray. And one day, light dawned. <laughs> So all of you, that's why I don't pity people when they say they don't, they don't understand the understand. You've got to pray. You've got to pray. They can teach you. But until revelation light comes, you won't find nothing in this. Someone say, I don't understand my life. Someone say, I don't understand. Begin to say, I understand. I have an understanding of the Holy Ghost. That's how to engage it. You see that number three? This is how to engage. The, you see, I understand. I understand my family. You know, there are people you don't understand. You have to turn into prayer and start confessing it. I understand my wife. I understand the scriptures. Glory to God. I understand Nigeria. I understand the president. I understand. Glory to God. Amen. You, you've got to keep saying it. Number four, the spirit of counsel. We all shall need counsel in decision making and the best person to advise or give counsel for us is the, the person of the Holy Ghost. He loves us. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 14, as many as are led, there is a leading that comes by the Holy Ghost. There is a leading by come by the help of the Spirit. We must consider the importance of counsel. Listen, counsels are important. Many people have missed it in life based on counsel. Listen to this. I don't know whether you have ever read 1 Samuel 16 and then verse 23. I don't know whether you have ever read it. The Bible says, that, um, this is not 1 Samuel, that should be 2 Samuel. All uh, right, um, yeah, Second Samuel, Second Samuel 16, 23. All right, Second Samuel 16 and then 23. The scripture told us about a man by the name of Ahitophel. I mean, David was, was they had planned coup. They had sent him out. <laughs> and David prayed. They said the counsel of Ahitophel is as if a man had seen God. <laughs> Stops. He had to pray, Lord, confuse the counsel of Ahitophel. That is how important counsels are. There are people who are canceling them against you. That's why you have not been promoted. You've got to pray, Lord, confuse the cancels of Ahitophel. It don't, don't fight her because you think that she does not, she always listens to, in fact, some of you are calling those people witch because they always listen to the other guy. The other listens to them. Cancel them. You can go higher. That's what David did. David went higher. Say, God, I'm not arguing that you have given this guy wisdom. But Lord, Cancel the cancel of Ahitophel. Listen to this. Whenever you are going to receive advice from anybody, let me give you three things you should do. Number one, first of all, go to the Holy Spirit. That's number one. Number two, understand that your best source of counsel is in God, not on social media. Number three, if you will ever see counsel from men, ever, Ensure it is a man that is filled with the Spirit of God. <laughs> I remember this story. A man of, I mean, my father in the Lord told me this story, and some of you have, must have heard this story before. Reverend George was sharing. He said, he said there was a particular man who got a job, and the job was going to pay him four times of his present salary. Are you following what I'm saying? If you are collecting 150k normally now, no, right. somebody now give you an offer of 600,000, 600k. Do you think that's an elevation? Somebody saying, I'm collecting 300. Okay, so you are collecting 300 now, they now give you times four. That's 1.2 million. 
Glory to God. Somebody say, I don't like that. I don't like that example. I'm calling 500,000. Okay. You're calling 500K now. They now give you a job of 2 million. You get it in perspective now. Praise God. 2 million. Now, the person went to Reverend George and said, Baba, I've gotten this offer. Baba prayed and said, listen, listen, listen. Don't take that job. I know they are here. <laughs> say, she, don't take that job. Say, you say I should not do what? He said, I have known. These pastors, they just want to put you under. They never don't want you to, to go up in life. That's what he said. Now listen to this. He took the job and left the church. You know, you can took the church. You can take the job and stay in the church. No, but they don't do that. It's the rebellion spirit will push you out. So, then the ways of the transgression is hard. So the man took the job. They gave him a car that followed it. He said he even moved with the car around where he was. Onk. Very well. The car was better than the one he was using. You know, there's a way they can, if they give you official car in Lagos now, your car will be better than my car. You understand what I'm saying? So you honk it. Say, man of God, Jerry, I like, man. You see what he said? But they do not understand that the, it is not for the now. Six months after, somebody say six months after, the company folded up. No, it's not that. You thought they said they sacked him. No, they didn't sack him. The sack him was good. Himself and the company, all of them were sacked. That means the company folded up. In fact, I perceived that it was the Jonah that spoiled the ship for the company. But the company folded up. Now listen. After one year, he didn't even get the job that paid him the minus four. One. He stayed for 10 years without a good job. How did he get there? Someone said they cost him. They didn't cost anything. There's no cost. He did not listen to counsel. Mom was preaching here on wisdom some three weeks ago. Pierre was preaching on wisdom three, four weeks ago. I was telling you about people. I, I said, Mafe, <laughs> don't marry him. This one I see is a nigger. This is not a husband. They said, no. Today, they are goodly married. You know, there's happily married. There's Amsha married. They are sham married. With a lot of war and affliction. Let me say this to you. When you ever hear a couple fighting and you hear it outside, understand that they have fought 10 times on times in secret before the one you had outside. How did it enter into that? Lack of wisdom. Listen to counsel. Let the Holy Spirit counsel you. And then five, the spirit of wisdom. Let me move very fast here. God didn't why spirit of might. <laughs> Someone looked at me and said, Kilo Shelly, <laughs> The spirit of might. God didn't wire believers to be timid, afraid, and fearful. He gave you the spirit of might. Micah chapter 3, verse 8. Oh, the spirit of might. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Uh, the spirit of might. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. The spirit of might. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17. The spirit of might. He's not giving unto the spirit of fear, but the power of love and of a sound mind. Have you read Isaiah 59 and 19? So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, you see that spirit again, the spirit of the Lord shall raise up a standard against them. Where is the spirit of the Lord? Do you get that? Where is the spirit of the Lord? In you. <laughs> so that it's not that they will not come like a flood. But because Motide, George is standing, the spirit of the Lord raised standard. It's not that they did not plan evil against you. Is that the spirit of the Lord raises his standard? Why is it that believers should walk in might? Because the spirit of the Lord is raising standard. That's why you should walk with confidence. Somebody said, I had a dream. They killed me in my dream. The reason they didn't kill you truly is because there was a spirit raising up a standard. Might. Proverbs 30, verse 30. Proverbs 30, 30. The lion is like every beast. But it's like no other beast in the forest. His Bible says he does not turn back from any. Does it? Which is mighty among beasts and does not do what? How many times have you turned back? You try a course, it is hard, you leave. You try a relationship, the guy, you leave. You try this, you leave. Ah, ah! This is not, this is not, this is cat spirit you carry. You are praying in talks, but this cat spirit, you see that? See that? 
it does not turn back from any. Many times you win in life because you outlast the devil. Not because you are fighting, you outlast him. Stay in the ring. You give up too soon. All these watermelons, which boom, boom, they punch you like you are bringing out water. Stop that nonsense. You know, watermelon spirit, just start crying. If they punch you small. No, stop that nonsense. You've got the lion spirits. You have to look like a lion. The son of a lion is a lion. The son of a cat is a cat. Olongbo is different from lion. You don't carry the spirit of a cat. You carry the spirit of a lion. It's the spirit of might. Demons and devils can shout. You have to stand because he that in you is greater than he that is in the world. It's the spirit of might. Listen, you can know these things, but you will still not act this way because you are not allowing the Holy Spirit to titrate this information to you at key moments and in key junctions of your life. You must let him titrate. The devil bring an information. He may come. That's not for me. That's not my report. That's not my report. They are sacking people. <laughs> they can sack them. Immediately you say they can sack them. You have exempted yourself. They can sack them. They can sack them. I remember one time they told me, they said they were sacking people. Man. I told my wife, they can't sack you. The moment they took you, they, they did it. That is Shete Kenya. It's only, the only thing that happened was I said, we are not doing it again. But sack, sack, who sack, who sack, what? Someone said, don't be talking like that in public. I have said it, I have said it. Are you understand what I'm saying? Hey, what we know is what we know. The devil cannot kill me. If you hear that I die, my time is up. Are you following what I'm saying? So tell the witches not to bother. Glory to God. We, are, we, don't, we don't like this word that much, but we have an assignment to do. When we are done, we are going to the side of our south, Savior. If I'm not done, I'm not going anywhere. Let the old witches in my town, let them come. And this is the spirit of mind. I remember one time, they were having a wedding in my house. Glory to God. And my first daughter was having a wedding. First sister. Hey, first daughter. It's her first daughter in our house. Glory to God. Hey, glory to God. And she was having a wedding. Okay, she was getting wet married. And then I was in the lorry, and then you see, you know there are people in Yoruba families that you know they are witches, and you know they are witches, confirmed witches. Glory to God. If you are originally from Yoruba land, not Lagos people, you know people are Lagosians. You know in Lagos you think there are no demons. Glory to God. They, they say there are no witches. Glory to God. But you see some of us, we know where we came from. And you see this woman came to the house, and the moment she entered the house, I mean, we, people are not nice. Devils are not nice. A four-bedroom house, you entered one room, and everybody left the room for you. So everybody was cramming together in one, two, two rooms, and then the other room was for daddy and mommy. What will happen? And then I was wondering kilo shelly you people should go to your room my sisters have left their room so ha glory to god what's going on here and then when she moves in the foreign everybody disappears and she told them are you frying meat he said yes and my coat made them say everybody said yes, yes, yes ah what's going on in our own wedding in my home father's house true life story true life some people know what i'm talking about true life story ah so i came and then they said ah so, so, they quickly come and meet you. You know, those kind of things. They don't want you to, it should not take you without being, being notified. So they come to notify me. I say, she's around. Though. From the door, they didn't allow me to enter the, the parlor. I say, what's going on? I say, she's around. I say, hey, where is she? He says, she's, not, she's in the room. I say, in the room. I say, she will not come out because I'm here. She's not coming out there again. She's in prison. He said, what happened? I say, no problem. And so I, woke, I moved this idea. I didn't move it to anybody. Venom Palabo, she cabale, barada. Just practice tongues. Just 30 minutes. Vendele kombale, tayedaba. Open up. People will greet myself. Kemba no no, sapa. Mighty name. You see, it is battle for battle. Let me say this to you. She did not come out of that room. I didn't see her like this till I left. She. Kitchen, Bawo. I was, they were shining. I said, share the meat, share the meat, share everything. Who is she? Where is she? A fallen spirit inside of a woman. A fallen spirit. Witches are not even glorified in the Bible. Koloka Bible says, suffer no way to live. When Paul was writing about spirits, he said, dominions, powers, authorities, you can't find witches there except you edited, except you have an edited Bible version. EBV. Then narrate them. An unrated spirit of, an, of, of, of a fallen angel is disturbing my life. Hey, Yakoma Shiandalia. What work at here? I said, no, stop, stop, stop now. What's wrong? Is it that you are born again or you are not? All these things you carry, you say, I leave the devil alone, you leave it. That's why you're saying that. You've got to stand up. You've got to stand up. 
The devil came in the Maroon one day, came to Basin to visit the Son of God. Visitation, divine visitation. He came. I opened, I saw the thing. Oh, God, go shallow. I closed my eyes and I started praying. My heart rate went up. If I had BP, I would have died that day. Not from the devil's visitation, but for fear. Oh, you want to know how the story ends? I'm preaching. That means I didn't die. What are you talking about? Stop that. Listen. The devil is not as powerful as you think. You are not taking your space. You don't understand there is a spirit called the spirit of might. Uh -uh. People don't just have might. There is a spirit of might. What are you talking about here? One of the things I promised myself never to preach is a Christianity without power. What is the meaning of that? There's a problem when believers flee from what is supposed to be fleeing from them. That's a problem. That's a problem. If the mighty men of God will do so much exploit, how much more believers? Oh, glory to God. Pull down strongholds. How do you engage this anointing? Say it out loud and clear. Say it out loud and clear in every place that the Holy Spirit is raising stand against the wicked. Keep saying it. The Holy Spirit raises stand. That's how to engage this anointing. I'm, I'm, I'm mighty. With, I'm with might. I'm with might. You are not ordinary. You don't understand. How can the one who created the heavens and the earth decide to live inside of you? You are not ordinary. He who breathed and the sea parted. He came on Sinai. Sinai began to burn. And he's inside of you. You now go to work and you are crying. Or you wake up depressed. What, what is that thing they call depression? I tell people, if anyone here is depressed, come and see me. Up. I have dosage of joy. The only cure to depression I know is joy. It's not reading books. It's joy. I've got joy. Joy like a river. Joy. Joy like a river. Number six. What is that again? The spirit of knowledge. Let us begin to close here because I think I think I think I think I've, I've, I've done my work. The anointing enables you to have knowledge of truth. You know things because they are revealed to you of the Spirit of God. This is what I call the real witchcraft spirit. The one that makes you know things without being told. Are you following what I'm saying? That is this spirit we are talking about here. The gift of the word of knowledge. This deals with what already exists. Knowledge that relates with fact. You know, I told you that wisdom is of the future. Something that is unborn. This one tells you of something that already does what? Exists. Jesus looked at the woman and supernaturally knew all that the woman has done. Do you remember that Samaritan woman? Jesus knew. He said, go and call your husband. Go and call your husband. How who told Jesus that kind of information? Who told her him? He said, ah, you are right. <laughs> Even the one you are living with now. It's not your, you know, we need that kind of knowledge in this today generation. Many people come to church, you think they are married. They are not married. They are cohabitating. With rings in their hand. To the alone. And deceiving pastors, deceiving priests and bishops. They will even celebrate on Facebook and social media. I said, three years together, my love. They are not married. Never married. Never. Do you see why we say we need the spirit of knowledge? Peter, Peter, they said, we sold this property for that. They didn't consult George. They, he just knew that he ran out. He didn't, he didn't say how much is the value of land. He knew they were lying. He knew they were lying. How did he know? He knew, he knew. You know you can know. You can know. That boy lying to you, you don't need to come and meet me. I mean, oh, can't you see his mouth? Can't you see? He is a liar. Can't you see? Can't you see his mouth? Ah! I see why some people come and meet and say, I want my. Ah, are you that dumb? dumb? Hey, can't you see? If I spiritually, you will see like, like blood is coming out. He run no by AJ. Why man? Spiritually, he run. If you marry this one, your destiny is over. Can't you see? Say, so is this guy you want to marry? Can't you see? You can know. He's not a sister, Philo. Forget it. 
won't get it. This spirit can tell you. I'll tell you a story. Dagi Ward. Dagi Ward was, the, was starting his church in Ghana. He said he just had a meeting. And Dagi Ward means was saying, you know one of the things, he said, he said there was this particular sister. He said that sister can pray. He said he got to a time. Dagi Ward said they meet by four. He missed a time. He said when they get there, he said he will always find this woman. This lady. Praying. So, you know when people are praying, you know they have been praying there for a long time. Say you will know that she said, maybe like an hour before. She has already prayed. Say so. He said, I will come earlier. She said, I come here. And she will meet the lady praying. Hanama. Epe. 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 You know, I told you it's not tongues. Epe. Epe. Okoto. Ah. That, that said, he started saying, Am I the, this girl's pastor or this girl's pastor in me? This one is more spiritual than I am. He said, One day, the Lord opened his eyes. And then he saw the lady. On a man. Say God said to tell her. No. Say God told him. Tell her. That. She needs. To consecrate. She needs. To stop sleeping around. He said. He said. God has not called him. That this lady cannot sleep around. This one that should. Say this is. Uh, this is pride. It's just, I'm just. This one. This prayer warrior. Cannot. He said. After one week. She went and said. Sister. This come. The Lord said to tell you. Say the moment she said like this, she just broke down and started crying. Say she's addicted to sex. Addicted to sex. He said, now he was already thinking, because he was not married, that this is a marriage life. This, this is somebody I can marry. I mean, this is a pastor's wife. Elegant. Pastor's wife. If he had married her without knowledge. That's why I say it's not tongues. You have to listen to the Holy Ghost. You see, if you had married her, you won't hear that, that word means today. You won't. You see what I'm saying? It's the spirit of knowledge. A spirit of knowledge. Can I take you to the school of the spirits? Can I take you to the school of spirits? I, 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 take, I, I, I tell you, tell you, tell you, tell you one, tell you, tell you one more story. You, 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 you came to church, so let me tell you one more story. Many years ago, they called me from my office on a Friday morning. And it wasn't a Friday. And they said there was a lady in church that's sick, that they brought from Abuja, and they, need, they needed prayers. Ah. I said, let her come on Friday now. I'm, I'm, you know now, it's Friday. I don't let her come on Friday. I don't have time. He said, no, this one is very sick. So they, so Reverend called me. And I mean, the Reverend I respect, so I said, Tom. I, I, so I went there. I said, Rev, you can handle this. Why are you calling me? He said, Moti, retire. Come and do it. And then I, I just stayed. I saw them ministering to that lady. I just stayed. I had called the minister. I said, man of God, come. What are you dealing with here? He said, ah, they gave her something. And she ate it. And from that time, she has been sick. I said, oh. He made you say that. I said, oh. The spirit said, that's a lie. That's a lie. So I moved back. I said, Holy Spirit, what, 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 what then are we facing here? He said, stop this ministration and ask her. They gave her something in her secondary school. Tell her to go and bring it out. I said, thank you, sir. I said, oh yeah, how many hours have you been doing this? You know, when people have been praying for like four hours, they're already tired. So when you say, hey, stop, they say, thank you, sir. <laughs> I said, stop, sir. <laughs> oh, we're already tired. <laughs> thank you. I said, okay. Um, sweetheart, are you fine? And you know, my wife told me one day I should not call her sweetheart because even demons. I said, sweetheart, how, how are you doing? She said, said I'm, I'm fine. I said, okay. I said, somebody gave you something um, like an artifact when you were in secondary school. Where is it? She said, ah, the moment you said it now, I forgot where it was, but I used to know where it was. I said, no problem. I said, we would pray. And then we began to pray. Now, this girl had was losing weight. She had become that sick, crazily sick. So I said nothing. And then we just began to pray. And then eventually I stopped. And then I said, call her father. Her father is a big boy in Abuja. I mean, for you to fly, fly a demon possessed. Fly. It's not, it's not cheap. Even though you go to car. So, you know, there are levels to these things. So I called the father and I said, hello, sir. What really is going on here? Your daughter has something I think it should be in our room. If it's not in our room, 
Find it around the house. He said, do we know what we are looking for? I said, when you find it, you will know. And they began to find it and we continued praying. About 30 minutes later, they called us. They found that thing. And the lady also said, yes, that's it. So the man said, should we burn it? I said, burn what? You know, in Yoruba film, when you hear things like that, you quickly burn it. I said, burn what? I said, don't kill your daughter. Return it to the owners. Uh, you know, I told this course to the spirit. Right, all right. I said, return it to the owners. The man said, ah, how will I know the owners? I said, take it to the river. Any flowing river you find, throw it there. And then you have returned it to the owners. You know, I told him the second year, you will know me. I, was, I don't say things like this last year. I just preach normally. <laughs> and so they took it to the owners. The man said as he threw it there, there was a ripple. Of, the white water became like blood. Rippled! And just disappeared. From that moment, the lady became well. Listen, it was not prayer. It was a knowing. If I did not know, there was no healing. Some of us, the problem we face is the problem of knowledge. What you love that you carry in your house, only the, it has a reason. I remember they gave us something when we got married. Very beautiful cups. Have you any cups like that? My wife said, this cups, this cup. I said, you know, and then the devil wants to get you. It will be fine. I had this sensational attachment to these cups. I said, no, you can't, this one, you can't throw it away. The first one we carried like this and it dropped. First one, broke. The second one, they served me with it like this. You see, you have to be prayerful. They served me like this. And the thing, broke. Ah. So I think we took the last one and broke it ourselves. <laughs> now we try and discuss and say, who gave us? The person wrote girl or something. There was no name. It was just like from a girl, from girl or something. No name. They sent it. But he that is with us. Let me say this to you. The word is a very spiritual space. In case you don't know, know today. That God will not do anything for you again. Much more than he has done for you. There is a spirit of knowledge inside of you. It is time for you to begin to live it out. I'll give you a story of Lester Sumra. Lester Sumra says something very awesome. Have you heard of Lester Sumrall? Aha, uh -huh. you people, you, yeah, you will hear by coming here. You'll be hearing people. Lester Sumrall. Lester Sumrall is Tunde Bakari's father. You have to, you have an adult Tunde Bakari. That's his father. Now Lester Sumrall has gone to be with the Lord. Now Lester Sumrall said a story in his one of his books, the gift and the, the gift of the this gift of the Spirit. That's the name of the book. I have the book, right? He says something that is very awesome in that, in, that, in, that, in that book. Now listen, there was this particular woman who was an old woman. She was praying. And as she prays, listen to this, listen to this. As she prayed, she saw, no, she was reading her Bible. And as she was reading the Bible, she saw her son and her granddaughter. That means the son's daughter. She saw them drowning in a river. Are you following me? From reading the Bible. She, she just saw, she just knew that these people were going to, they were drowning in the river. She called the house immediately. Nobody picked. She called the guy's number. He didn't pick. So you know what the woman did? She called the police. 911. She called 911. And said her son is drowning in the river. Her son has drowned. Her son has drowned. Annoying. Just annoying. Do you know what they said? The police said no. That, were you there? Are you in front of the river? How do you know? He said, he said no. He said, I just know. The police said, no. They are not doing anything. She, they dropped the line. She kept calling. They said to themselves, let's go and check it out. When they got there, when they got there, the boat had capsized. And the son, the son and the daughter were in the river. Escaped. Because the woman knew. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will bring an image to you of a person. Out of the blues. Out of the blues. To pray for them. But you're, you are too full. Too much food will make you sleep off. Too much food will make you sleep off. 
you are not concentrating. You are not doing the things of the Spirit. Why? Why is that so? Because you are not in tune with the things of the Spirit. Can I ask you how many of you have known things? You know many of you have known things? Somebody died. You knew. In fact, those people woke you up. But that night, it happened that you had pandemic at night. You slept off. I was annoying, but you slept off. You see what I'm saying? How do you engage this? Because this is very important. This is very, very key. Annoying. I see. When I tell you, I, I, I tell my wife, I have, it's been 14 years of working with the Lord. To the praise of his glory, I've never gotten it wrong. When I tell you this is it, it's going to happen now. You know why? Communion. Just lying down sometimes and saying, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I, I, I lied down last week. For more than an hour, all I said was, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. You know that one hour? Baba, you, you are grazing. Like I told you, the Holy Spirit does not need charging. Now you, they charge. He doesn't. Catch a Kuman crusade, power move. And they don't play in tongues. That shocked him. It shocked me to when I found out. I thought, I thought, I thought it, took, I, I took tongue. it took tongues to, 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 to make people walk who are lame. But he doesn't. It takes the spirit. It takes him being honored. So how do you engage this? Communion with the Holy Spirit. Can you start talking to the Holy Ghost? Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, I need you. I need you now more than before. Can you, can you just sing song? That is why one of the things I keep saying, and I will keep saying to this generation, if I'm the only voice, I will keep saying it, and it will be loud. It will be clear. Is that our song, our playlist is wrong. Our gospel playlist is wrong. Our gospel playlist is wrong. We need to have songs that glorify God and edify God. Not every time fire set me on fire, I cook I cook with fire, I die with fire, I cook fire, I go fire. No way. Worship is to adulate God. Adulation is to worship Him. It's to stay in His presence and magnify Him, to extol Him. There is a reason they call Him King. When you see kings, you don't ask for fire. You first of all, I mean. Somebody that has made kings now known to Nigerians is the only of you. When the guy comes in now, some, some praise singers first of all follow. Hey, hey, hey what you do? He first of all, what is he doing? Praise. That's to tell you that praise goes before his presence. If you really want to see God at work, you've got to lift up the voice of praise. You know, believers don't even know what praise is anymore. Say, let us praise God. Set my heart on fire for you. I want to, I say praise God. Only I want to burn for you. How is that praising God? How? How? Stay in his presence. If you don't have song, get one. Sing a psalm in your heart, in your spirit. Then it might not be to, according to any tune. The keyboard is not there. It's you and God. I love you. I love you. Oh, Lua, I love you. I love you. Oh, Lua, I love you. Is that not a song? I love you. Oh, Lua, I love you. I love you. Oh, Lua, I love you. It's a song. Just start doing that. Estole. 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 One of the things I say to people is, I know all things. I know all things. Don't never say that thing. I don't know. You know like that. I know all things. That's how to engage it. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Isaiah 55 verse 9, 59, 19. You shall first fear the Lord and then the spirit will raise standard against the enemy. You remember we read that? You fear him and then he will raise a standard. When I see decisions that the people make, I know they don't fear God. I know they're just using God. I, as I was going to the restroom just before I came out and preached, God said that you ask some of you that you should mark one month, two months and do a calendar how many times you come to church. Just Sunday, ah, you will see that even in your decisions, there's no fear of God. 
fear the Lord. Not because I was a pastor. I, the, way, the way I was raised, the assembly of God's people is important. Fear the Lord. Look at you. You are kissing that man. And you say, PFA is not seeing you. Uh, even if you, if you close all the camera breath, Jesus sees you. Everything are open and naked before him with whom we have today. The fear of the Lord. This is not, you know, I keep telling a generation that this is not a G God. I say, who is God? You say, my G. Somebody say, my sky daddy. I feel like slapping the person. The one who created the heavens and the earth. Your G. If I when they say my G, I thought they were tired of saying God or maybe they were, you know, I say, no, my G is like my friend, my body. I say, ah. He's your friend, but that's reductionism to think that you can just call God friend, that that's all there is to God. Do you fear the Lord? When people don't fear the Lord, it shows. In God's presence, as heavy as the cloud was when we were worshiping that time, you knew. Some people are still pressing their phone. You can see that. Kosie, Siberu. I feel like preaching like a CAC master. You know, in CAC, there are things that you can't do. Ah! You can't! In where I was raised, in Ekwa, as Susan was worshiping, you can't come in. They will close the door. You can't. Just worship. You can't. Not talk of prayer. They will put that rope in front. You can't enter. Why? Because we are honoring his presence. But Pentecostals have become petty rascals. Oh, it's my G. My G, you can't do anything. Glory to God. The fear of the Lord. Do we know that is the fear of Israel? You know, that's one of the name of God. The fear of Israel. That's who we serve. Don't do that reductionism and say, my God is love. My God is also the fear of Israel. My God is also the just one. My God is also the consuming fire. You know when battle comes, George, you don't need God as love. You need the consuming fire. You need some balloon, the one that defends. Bow down your head, bow down your heart. Now, I want you to do something today. God said to tell you. You know, many years ago, the Lord stopped me from praying in tongues for a few, few weeks. He stopped me. Now, I, some of you have never heard that story before. But the Lord said to me, don't pray in tongues again. I was shocked. But for a few weeks, he wouldn't let me do that. And then I discovered how terrible it was. My soul was not connecting to God on any level. So I did not even have words to even tell God. So like people will say, Jesus is the lover of my soul. I can't even say, I know a man that I said, pray for your daughter and he started praying in tongues. He could not even render anything. In. There's no soul connection. Is that who you are also? The Holy Spirit, I don't, do you know, I, I pray a lot in tongues. If I can say like Paul, I thank the Lord, I speak in tongues more than you all. But do me a favor as we pray today. Can you pray in understanding? And just, just, just say, God, I don't know which part of this sermon touch. I don't know which one of this message gets to you. Can you begin to say, Lord, Lord, I want to walk in the fullness of your spirit. I want to see the influences of your spirit in my life. Lord, I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see the influences of your spirit in my life. Lord, I want to see you. Lord, I want to see you. I want to know you. Lord, I want to see the influences of your spirit. I want to walk in wisdom. I want to walk in knowledge. Lord, I want to walk in understanding. Lord, I want to walk in grace. Lord, I want to walk in power. Talk to God. You see, that's it. Some of you is very odd. Some of you are very used to tongues. It's very odd. But come on and do that now. Do that now. Do that now. Do that now. Speak to God in understanding. Let him hear you. Find expression of words to God. God said to tell somebody here that you have, have not had you worship me in your own language, in your own words. Say, I want to hear you myself. Tell me sweet things. That's God speaking. Who am I to you? Let me know. Let me know. 
Can you do that now? Can you do that now? From the deep recess of your ass, carefully, carefully find words that truly express what you feel about God. Right now. Right now. Melevo Lavrashia. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Find the words. You have one more minute. Find the words. Find the words. Somebody say, what's it done? Find the words. Find the words. Find the words. It's a soul connection with God. Find the words. We've come to that mountain that can be touched. Find the words. Don't pray in tongues. Don't pray in tongues. Find the words. Lord, thank you. I'm grateful. Grateful for how far you have brought me. I'm not where I used to be. I'm not where I want to be, but I thank you for the journey. Thank you for the Lord God of my journey. Thank you. I am here today because of you. If it was not you who was by my side, I would have been consumed. It's not because I know how to plan my life, but thank you. Thank you. Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm grateful. Are you speaking? Are you speaking? Father, thank you. Lord, we give you glory.